Okay. Went to call the meeting in order. Roll call. Christy Shank. Trustee Shank. Here. Trustee Marquardt. Here. Trustee Forster. Here. Trustee Oppenheim. Here. Trustee Cook. Here. President Byrne. Here. And Trustee Takaoka gave prior notice that he would not be in attendance. Okay, would everybody please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance. Okay. Is there a motion to appoint Trustee Cook President Pro Temp? I'd like to nominate Trustee Cook to be President Pro Temp for the duration of the meeting. Second. Motion is second. Roll call. Trustee Marquardt. <laughs> Trustee Oppenheim. Aye. Trustee Schenk. <clears throat> Trustee Forster. Aye. Trustee Takaoka. Trustee Cook. Aye. President Byrne. Aye. Okay, motion carries. <clears throat> uh, first item is the is citizens wishing to address the board. Is there anyone here who wishes to address the board on a subject other than what we've got? Because we've got some other stuff that I hear most of the crowds here for. Okay, then in that case, um, next item is official reports. Uh, village manager. Yes, thank you, sir, and good evening, everyone. Um, we have two very important employee anniversaries this evening that we'd uh, like to present. Uh, so first, if I could have uh, Jerry join me at the podium, please. Good evening, Jerry. Good evening. Okay. Well, for those of you that don't know, Jerry is one of our CSOs with the Village of Vernon Hills Police Department. And next Tuesday, March 12th, Jerry celebrates his 40th employment anniversary with the Village of Vernon Hills. Jerry started employment with the Vernon Hills Police Department on March 12th, 1984. He was actually uh, hired and interviewed with former Chief of Police Larry Lashen. Jerry holds the record as being the longest serving member of the Vernon Hills Police Department. During Jerry's 40 years of service, he has been recognized for numerous achievements to include commendations for exceptional performance and service to the community, including two life-saving awards. In addition to serving the village, Jerry also works at Hawthorne Mall as a member of their security unit. And this coming August, Jerry will have completed 45 years of service at Hawthorne Mall. And lastly, in his free time, Jerry is an avid photographer and has numerous albums of photographs of Vernon Hills, some of which appear from time to time in our village publications. Uh, Jerry, on behalf of, of the Vernon Hills staff, thank you very much for 40 years of service. Thank you very much. Congratulations on this achievement. Thank you very much. If Jerry wanted to say anything. Would you like to say something? <laughs> Decline. Okay, uh, next up we have Pete Nielsen. Take care. <laughs> <laughs> the smoke one is pretty good. <laughs> Seems staged, I don't know. Well, uh, for those who don't, Pete Nielsen is a, a crew leader with our Public Works Department. And next Monday, March 11th, Pete celebrates 45 years of employment with the village of Vernon Hills. Pete started, Pete started his employment with the Vernon Hills Public Works Department on March 11th, 1979. Pete currently holds the record as not only being the longest serving Public Works employee, but the, also the longest serving village employee. Pete was assigned as the first crew leader within the Public Works Department in the 1990s overseeing the streets department and has continued in that role since. During Pete's 45 years of service, he has primarily driven truck number 14 in the Deerpath subdivision, which has been replaced three times. 
<laughs> By our math, Pete has plowed in excess of 100,000 miles of snow in truck number 14. Pete is known as being hardworking, a humble family man with a big heart. He enjoys working with the Boy Scout troops and volunteers his time working at their camps on a regular basis. Uh, lastly, I, I learned that Pete is also a big fan of John Wayne, and in thinking about his 45 years of steadfast service to the village, I, I found a few quotes that I think might speak to that uh, commitment. The first is, a man's got to do what a man's got to do. <laughs> Second is, talk low, talk slow, and don't say too much. And lastly, tomorrow is the most important thing in life. Come into a, comes into us at midnight very clean. It's perfect when it arrives and it puts itself in our hands. It hopes we've learned something from yesterday. Pete, congratulations on 45 years. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. That is a lot of years of service. Um, and boy, we cannot thank you enough, both of you, uh, for all the service you've given this community. Um, it, it, it speaks volumes uh, about both of you that you've served us for so long and served us so well. Uh, Mayor, did you have anything you wanted to add? Yeah, you know, no, no question about it. It was like also, you know, with Jerry, every time I think I ever went to the ball, I squawk, you know, because I knew we worked there for them. And that was great, Jerry. And, uh, and Pete goes without saying that uh, 100,000 miles of anything is great, but to be plowing that much. Did you ever try the V plow? <laughs> yeah, that's only for parades, right? But congratulations to both you guys. Yeah, congratulations, and again, <clears throat> thank you for all those years of service. Um, and now we'll take a moment if anybody wishes to depart, or you can stay because we're going to do the budget tonight. And, and you could, no? Nobody wants to stay for the budget later? So. Okay. Uh, no offense, Tom, but when it, you notice when I mentioned budget, like the place cleared out. I mean, just, you know. Oh. <laughs> okay. Um, next thing then is, is uh, Chief, right? Yes, yes sir. Thank you. Um, uh, Mr. Mayor and Board, just uh, um, I'm, I'm here tonight and we're joined by. Uh, Tom Quill. Uh, Tom is the chair of the Village's Board of Fire and Police Commissioners. Um, he serves also with a resident of Ramesh Kanapareti and um, Brett Moberg. And the Board of Fire and Police Commissioners, as you know, but for the, for the benefit of anyone that might uh, be tuning in, um, is a lower board of the village board that's really charged, most importantly, with making sure that the village selects um, uh, through merit, the very best police applicants that are available, 
and it's a safeguard to make sure that politics are kept out of uh, the, uh, the hiring decisions, amongst other things. Um, however, the world is changing and the environment is changing, um, and frankly, the type of processes that the Board of Fire and Police Commission um, and staff have been using um, historically, we're finding are a little outdated. Um, our hiring needs are exceeding the quantity of candidates that we're able to generate through the traditional process. So in review of this, um, the board has asked, uh, the Board of uh, Fire and Police Commissioners has asked Attorney Forello, who represents the board as well, um, to assist in undergoing a review of the rules um, any significant change to those rules would be brought before the village board for uh, future consideration and adoption before the BFPC could actually um, uh, undertake um, a, a change of procedure. And at that time, because I, I don't want to predict where those rule changes might go, but at that time, that would be explained to the village board so that it can make a due uh, consideration of those changes. But in essence, um, it's just time to review some, some, some long held practices and see if we can't be a little more nimble given today's uh, hiring environment. So with that, either myself or Mr. Quill could uh, clarify, but um, nothing's gonna happen before we come before you again with an ordinance and kind of a, a play by play of what rule changes have been landed on or suggested. Anybody have any questions? I, I would just add, if I can, uh, in order to accomplish this task, we, we would be relying on the village's home rule authority to deviate from the, from the state statute, which is why we would be coming back to you for approval of the modified rules. Okay. I'm assuming then most of the questions will come then when we're actually looking at the nuts and bolts of it, so. Okay, anything Well, it, you know, you know, uh, yeah, that, the job of the Phoenix Fire Convention, you know, is, uh, is extremely important. And uh, I think I could say, as the chief just said, that, you know, we leave it up to those three individuals to make the recommendation to the chief and all the years that that's been going on, I can't honestly say myself or any trustee ever interfered with that hire process. And that's a, that's a great thing that we trust people that have the, uh, or they have the authority. And, uh, you know, to that end, it's a very honest process. That's all I got. Okay. No, and I, th <clears throat> I think the process has worked well for us. All you have to do is look at the department we have and how long most people stay with us that uh, yeah. the process is working well. So if we need yeah. to tweak it a little bit, that'll be fine. <clears throat> all right. Anything else from anybody on staff, no? Okay. Then the next item is the omnibus vote agenda. Is there a motion to approve items A through G? Motion to approve. A motion to second. I just had a question, uh, item G, basically that's gonna be exactly the same as they've done in the past, right? There's no, uh, no unfinished business and no additional New business, anybody have any communications they wish to share? <clears throat> okay, then in that case, um, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn the board meeting and go to committee of the whole. Motion to adjourn. Second. Motion is second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, we are adjourned. Back to you, Mayor. Yeah, I'd like to call the committee to hold me in the order and hear a uh, motion to appoint trustee uh, uh, president pro temp over this. I'd like to nominate. I'd like to nominate trustee Cook to be president pro temp for the duration of the meeting. Second it. 
Okay, roll call. Trustee Forster? Aye. Trustee Marquardt? Aye. Trustee Oppenheim? Aye. Trustee Schenck? Aye. Trustee Cook? Aye. President Byrne? Aye. Okay, <coughs> motion Chair. carries. Um, first item of business is the approval of the Committee of the Whole Meeting Minutes of February 20th, 2024. Is there a motion to approve? Motion to approve. Second. Motion to second. Any comments, questions, corrections? Hearing none, roll call, please. Trustee Forster? Aye. Trustee Schenck? Abstain. Trustee Marquardt? Aye. Trustee Oppenheim? Aye. President Byrne? Aye. Chairman Pro Tem Cook? Aye. Motion carries. Um, <clears throat> second item is Ace Pickleball. Minor amendments to Ordinance 2023-096, approval of special use and CBUC for pickleball. Thank you. Uh, staff has been in contact with a prospective tenant of uh, 555 Townline Road, which is the former uh, Toys R Us unit. Uh, the unit was uh, granted a uh, special use for a recreational facility for indoor pickleball. Uh, Pickle Mall was the applicant on that particular petition. Um, it was ultimately approved in September of last year. Uh, Pickle Mall elected not to uh, go ahead and, and complete the, uh, the project that had been approved. And the uh, landlord, the owner of that property, has been uh, working with a, uh, a new company, Ace Pickleball, which uh, awards franchises to uh, different franchisees to run facilities under their name uh, to uh, basically pick up where Pickle Mall left off. Uh, they, their request is to uh, modify the ordinance to uh, remove the references that are very specific to Pickle Mall, the teal coloring that you could see here, for example, um, and uh, amend the ordinance to insert themselves as the, uh, as the operator of this particular special use. Uh, there are a few uh, questions in the staff memo. Uh, we have been in touch with the, the landlord and the franchisee uh, since the memo was written, and so I do have some updates on those. Um, the uh, interior layout, uh, which uh, for Pickle Mall included a competition court, which was going to have spectator seating. Uh, Ace Pickleball does not intend to do that. They intend to use that extra space to do a six, uh, 16th court. Um, I'm sorry, is it 15 or 16? What is the 15. end result? 16. So, uh, 16. So, the, uh, just reviewing the, the uh, capacity of the unit, I don't have any particular issue with that. Uh, removing spectator seating probably decreases the total capacity uh, of, this, of this unit. So, um, with that, uh, Mitch Goltz, the, uh, the property owner, is here. Um, and uh, can can speak to the uh, to the petition here to represent the uh, ACE as well as uh, GW properties. Hey guys, here again. Hi, Landry, wonderful job. Here, be happy to be here before you again. Not necessarily for a new project, but uh, this whole time we should be uh, getting this thing done. To be clear, there's nothing wrong with the property that the tenant Pickle Mall uh, operationally determined that it was unable to scale up as far north as Chicago, based uh, down in Texas. So we, uh, we quickly pivoted to other, other options in that same arena. I have flown down to see the flagship facility in uh, Roswell, Georgia. It's a beautiful facility. It looked a lot like this from the space, and it was, it was about 11 o'clock in the morning, and you know, probably 10 courts were filled. So I have no doubt that it'll be a success here. Operationally, we'll operate very similar to what was proposed before. Um, very easy in, easy out. They have uh, free play during the day for just pickup games. So um, happy to answer any questions, but the memo um, from Ace plus uh, Andrew's good job, I think, cover everything today. Well, so. This drawing in front of us has, <coughs> excuse me, 14 courts. This, this was the pickle mall. Right, this right. The, right. Yep, I was only prefacing. Uh. Um, what I was wondering is how are you planning to get an additional, you said three more or two more? Uh, it would most likely would, would you rotate those 90 in the middle there or what? Yeah, there would be um, there is there is a, a proposed layout attached to the application. Yeah, there's there's a lot more space. I think they get rotated. Um, those three in the middle get rotated, yeah. you know, 90 degrees. So it gotcha. fit, you know, you look at look at the bottom. There's six of them. So it could probably fit three more. So, um, yeah, the general use will be the same. Will without the spectator portion of it will be probably be a lower overall occupancy. 
um, but generally consistent in character. So like and use. probably in the neighborhood of 16. Court. Yeah, I, I don't think there'll be more than that. So they, they noted that you know occasionally field conditions, there might be one court that might be a little bit short. Uh, there'll be one court that's called considered a skinny court for singles, which isn't as popular on the pickleball, but uh, okay. the court does get a little bit more narrow, skinnier. So. Okay. But uh, as part of the application, we're continuing to, to stand by our commitment to doing the parking lot work that we've talked about, and so nothing, really nothing has changed from, from that standpoint. We'll look to do that in the spring. We're coordinating it with Spectrum, who owns a larger shopping center, to do the work in a concerted effort, as well as the, the building next door, which I believe is under lease. So uh, hopefully uh, in the summer, that thing will be rocking a lot more than it is right now, so. Are there any, still any open questions from staff for that, or? No, the main, the main point was just uh, seeking confirmation of the interior layout. Um, there were exterior modifications proposed that were very specific to Pickle Mall. So, um, Mr. Goltz, if you have any uh, detail on that, um, we'd be happy to uh, include that in the ordinance if the, if the uh, committee is in favor yeah, I think of this, uh, Thank you. I think at this point they'd be doing some signage and some, some uh, you know, light aesthetic elements, but nothing major structural changes. So th that will go through the building review process. Um, but uh, they're eager to get started. The, the tenant flew out here a few weeks ago. We met on site, so we've, uh, you know, we're all but done on that. So this was pretty much the last piece. And of course, the obvious question: What kind of a timetable? Because this is one of the things I keep getting. About. <laughs> I know, and I've told them. And I, I think, um, you know, I, I will admit, I think the, the pickle mall was a bit, a bit eager and uh, more ambitious than they uh, could, could have handled. Um, but I know that their intention is to open within a few months. So they, the build out itself is not extensive, but getting the plans in for permit. Um, they're going to finish those plans, um, you know, probably in the next 30 days. Get in, and uh, you know, not, no stopping now. Given that uh, Dick's Dick's vacated the building end of January, so there's no, you know, tenant to kick out at this point. So um, hopefully, I would say in the, the next four or five months, we should see them open. So, Good. yeah, uh, we're all questions? excited. Other questions from the board? <clears throat> hard work you've done. What? I said the hard work you've done. I thought. Uh, thank you. Thank you. And. Um, you know, it's uh, unfortunately in, in, in our business and, and especially in businesses that are growing rapidly like pickle pickleball, it's things come up and people hit snags in, in sometimes the most unlikely spots. So, but uh, plenty of demand. Yeah. So. Okay. So, so then pr procedurally, this would not be a public hearing item. It would be a minor amendment to the PUD to remove the, the references that were specific to pickle mall and replace them with ace pickleball. So if that's the direction of the committee, uh, we would bring a, uh, an ordinance for consideration at, at a future board meeting. So basically all you need from us is con consensus Just tonight? consensus. Anybody have any? <coughs> no. Since this is so similar, yeah, please. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you. Right. Um, next item is Centennial Real Estate on behalf of, is this Pure Bay of Vernon Hills? Is it Pure Bar? Okay, Pure Bar, Vernon Hills, 122 Hawthorne Center, Unit 654, Certificate of Building Use and Conversion. Thank you. Uh, Centennial is uh, requesting what appears to be the first <coughs> conversion certificate uh, related to the mall. I went through our records to try to uh, determine why that might be. My best guess, as I explained in the memo, is uh, the overall square footage uh, associated with the, depart the department stores that have been demolished uh, was so large that the while we have a very similar amount of square footage devoted to non-retail uses, the base of that, that formula is now a smaller overall square footage. So uh, they are now over the, uh, the threshold, the 20% threshold. Um, and so uh, you have uh, here a case where a, a uh, fitness user, which is a non-retail use that has a very small retail component, uh, is requesting uh, the space under the, uh, the AMC. It has not been occupied since it was constructed. Um, they do technically uh, meet that threshold because they're increasing the total square footage of non-retail uh, for a location that already uh, exceeds that 20% uh, that 20% threshold. So the, the request is a conversion certificate. Um, as I noted in the memo, um, uh, in addition to considering the conversion certificate specific to Pure Bar, because we're well aware that this mall is undergoing uh, renovations, uh, I had suggested in the memo that this might be an appropriate time to consider uh, a, a broader conversion certificate perhaps relaxing the rules for the mall during this, uh, this transitional period. So 
Uh, Jeff Retson from the mall is here to discuss this with you uh, and answer any questions about Pure Bar. Um, uh, and I'm here as well to uh, answer any questions related to the code. Uh, but that, that's in a gist, uh, uh, the gist of the memo is both covering Pure Bar as well as the, uh, the broader question of how to handle the non-retail uses at the mall. Questions from the board? Because I think the <clears throat> most obvious thing in favor of this is the fact that that's a space that has not been used since it was built. So um, by all means, we should try to put something in there. Um, that's probably the most obvious thing in its favor. I had noted a few things that among, among the, uh, the items from the, uh, the petitioner um, in the in the application, I had I had uh, added on to that that uh, this particular uh, user is also already within the core retail uh, area. They'd be they'd be relocating from a unit that may have better retail potential. So there's the possibility of uh, of increased retail opportunity in this particular case um, by them vacating their their current location. Well, and they'll help increase foot traffic at the mall. So that's that's always a plus. Any other comments or that from the board? Mayor, Mike, anybody? No. Okay. Um, are you guys, I, it, it was hard to hear. Oh, uh, hold on real quick. It was hard to hear, but is there going to be like a food or a restaurant in there? They sell apparel. Uh, there's limit. They sell fitness apparel, and I think um, uh, a limited amount of of uh, things like Gatorade, things like that. But it's not a okay. not a significant uh, uh, aspect of their business. I think. Okay, then. Uh, what? Uh, all you're looking for again from us is consensus to move forward with it, or so it's um, it's a two-pronged question, I suppose. It's uh, consensus related to, to this particular conversion certificate, related the the specific 1,700 square foot space. While the committee is considering that, uh, we do have the opportunity to uh, consider a broader uh, approach. So the mall itself could have a conversion certificate uh, when we bring this back as an ordinance that could uh, cover this transitional period. We could uh, consider such options as a, a, a different threshold, a time period, uh, you know, two, three year time period where the rules, uh, the conversion certificate is just a, a blanket conversion certificate for this property. Um, we could bring back uh, options. We could bring back a specific ordinance for 1,700 square feet in this unit and some uh, uh, flesh out some options for the committee to consider for a a broader uh, uh, adjustment as well. Okay. So you're asking us whether or not you want us to allow you to, to bring up other options? Yes, would you, would you like to see uh, a conversion certific certificate specific to 1,700 square feet in this unit, or would you like us to just go ahead and bring back something that's a, a broader or, or bring back a draft? Uh, we can accommodate uh, any number of, of options. No, with us working on the on the mall 2.0, I mean, it, it, I think the broader overall outlook would be better, you know, because it might help us speed process up in the future with anything okay. else that might. But don't they want a resolution to this particular space right now? They do, um, the, they, they are moving ahead. There are construction plans for this space. So um, why, don't, why don't we just approve this or direct you to to have the ordinance for that and at the same time you can sure absolutely I can, I can do that i can bring back for omnibus i can bring back this particular certificate and then bring a uh, uh a draft amendment uh to the section of the code um for consideration and discussion for the committee okay anything else on this <clears throat> okay all right thank you um, all right, next item, proposed FY2425 budget presentation. Okay, thank you. Kick us off here. So we are going to be presenting the proposed fiscal 2025 budget. This covers the 
fiscal period from May 1st of 2024 through April 30th of 2025. Um, we have a, a very high level presentation prepared for you this evening. And before we jump in, I just wanted to take a quick moment to thank uh, members of our team for putting this together. Um, we actually start this budget process in October. Uh, it takes a, a team effort to put everything together. We have some more significant changes to our, our format and layout this year, and so that took some extra dedication from some of our staff. Uh, specifically, I want to thank uh, Carissa Hansen in Public Works, Andy Hoppy in the Police Department, and uh, Director Lyons for all their effort in, in putting that together. Um, the draft budget is intended for discussion purposes only, and we're looking for feedback and direction from the board as we begin to prepare our final budget, uh, which we plan to approve later in April. Um, refinements and adjustments to the budget will be made based on the board's direction this evening and at our upcoming committee the whole meeting on March 19th. Um, again, we are uh, going to be keeping everything at a very high level this evening. Uh, the format and flow of the presentation is similar to what you've seen in previous years. All the detail of the budget is within the document that was distributed last week. So if you do have any specific questions, we'd be happy to dive in and get into that further, further detail, but we're trying to keep this streamlined for everyone's, uh, everyone's benefit. So just a quick recap of our calendar upcoming. Uh, this evening's Committee of the Whole meeting and the March 19th Committee of the Whole meeting where we will present the proposed budget. We will have a public hearing scheduled for our first meeting in April, on April 2nd, uh, with the tentative budget approval on our second meeting, April 16th, and then of course our fiscal year beginning on May 1st. Uh, as we draft the budget, we are governed by village policies that have been in place for quite some time. Um, they really consist of core financial policies, revenue policies, expense policies, and then policies related to capital improvements and facilities. Um, we're happy to report that the village remains at a AAA bond rating. There is no new debt proposed as part of the proposed fiscal 25 budget. And of course, our, our, our biggest key is uh, no property tax levy associated with funding village services. On the expense, line, on the ex expense side, uh, the proposed budget keeps our operating expenses in check and we continue to focus on operating improvements and efficiencies, uh, in particular as we go forward by investing in new technologies to focus on staff uh, time savings, which ultimately leads to uh, cost savings. And then finally, later this evening, we'll be introducing some capital improvement uh, funding concepts for your consideration. Uh, some other items here, uh, the proposed budget does maintain our target fund balance policies. And we continue to work closely on aligning our budget reporting with generally accepted accounting principles. So with that, I will turn things over to Finance Director Tom Lyons. Thanks, Kevin. Uh, I want to echo Kevin's comments on uh, the, the input and appreciate all the input for everyone who has put uh, effort into this over the last several months. It's uh, definitely a big task. <clears throat> So I just want to review some of the changes that you're seeing in, in your draft budget book compared to last year. Uh, working with each department's budget teams, we've reviewed how, how we could use the current accounts and divisions and funds, how we could simplify without losing critical information, and key takeaways. The more we can simplify, the accounting process becomes more consistent, and financial reporting is clear. A few things that we <clears throat> did in this task, uh, account and division consolidations, we took every opportunity we could to review the accounts and see where we don't need multiple accounts and minimize what we could there. Uh, likewise, we've changed some names and added some accounts uh, if it made more sense to report the items accurately so the reader of the statements would be able to identify what's in these uh, accounts by their name. And this, these efforts reduced the budget size by about one third. Unfortunately, unfortunately, the presentation is not any shorter. <laughs> so a few more things. Uh, the three main expense categories within most departments, the contractual services and commodities, these are not changing from last year, but the salaries and wages and employee benefits have been included into one category called personnel. This allows the reader to quickly see the cost of personnel on one line. Uh, we've also have IT costs sharing applied to the departments where the IT costs are incurred. So in the past, IT costs have been recorded and reported only in the administration fund, although we use them village-wide. So this is a method to help um, report those costs in the, in the correct cost centers. 
Uh, personnel costs allocated to cost centers where time is spent. For example, public works crew spends time on projects in both golf course and metro parking. Those costs will now be captured in the fund or department where those costs were incurred. The fund structure and general fund departments have been reorganized for the budget to better align with generally accepted accounting principles. More to follow on that in the next slides. So this slide shows uh, our current fund structure on the left, and I've highlighted in bold the accounts that are gonna have some changes. So if we start at the top left there into the general fund, we've historically reported the general fund with six sub funds, and we would have a consolidated general fund. Uh, sometimes the, the reporting or presenting of that concept got challenging. So we're gonna break each of these funds out into either their own fund or related department. So if you start at the top of the sub funds and look at the capital fund, we're gonna create its own capital fund, pr pretty much the same operation as just pulling out of the general fund. Uh, Vernon Hills Days Fund is going to be consolidated into the events department of the general fund with the other events. We can still see the same information we've seen in the past, this just makes it a little cleaner. Uh, Metro Parking Fund, gonna classify that as an enterprise fund and make that its own own fund, similar to the golf course fund. DUI, drug forfeiture, and state seizure funds will be their own special revenue funds. Uh, moving halfway down there, lastly, the replacement fund. Uh, we've historically had that as an internal service fund. I'm gonna make that a capital project fund and rename it to vehicle and equipment replacement fund. Short for that is VERF, which will help reduce the time of the presentation. So a little bit more on the VERF concept. Uh, what is the VERF? Uh, formerly the replacement fund, but the VERF will account for purchases of all our operational equipment and vehicles in excess of $10,000, rather than just the vehicles. The enterprise funds, golf and metro items are accounted for in those respective funds and are not included in the VERF. Using a VERF to purchase large dollar items for use in operations allows cash to be in place to fund any given year's vehicles or equipment purchases while keeping the department operating costs fairly smooth from year to year. Uh, how is the VERF funded? Departments will make annual contributions to the VERF. These contributions make sure cash is available each year to fund the department equipment needs. To determine how future items are to be scheduled, Finance works with each department to identify vehicles and equipment used along with relevant details about each item. This next slide just shows uh, a snapshot of the tool we use to schedule the, the vehicles and equipment. Uh, the full schedule includes over 140 items and we build out 30 years of anticipated purchases here. For example, each item is assigned a unique ID, description, fiscal year last replace, estimated useful life, what year to replace it next, and today's cost. For items scheduled in future years, the inflation factor is applied to today's cost so that in order to more accurately reflect the future cost for planning purposes. This data is assessed on an annual basis to help determine what the appropriate department contribution will be. This will ensure cash is available in the VERF to make these scheduled purchases without depending on the current year's revenue. For example, if we experience an economic downturn and the revenues are reduced, we still have the funds in place to purchase the necessary operating equipment. Uh, the new fund structure is outlined on this slide here. Starting on the top left, the general fund will continue to be the village's main operating fund. We now have 11 governmental funds, including two capital project funds and eight special revenue funds. Really, that's just the uh, general fund sub funds being broken out. On the right, we have two enterprise funds, now including golf and metro parking. Uh, the police pension fund, as this is a fiduciary fund, the village reports the pension fund in the village's overall financial statements as the village is ultimately responsible for the funding of the pension benefits. There is a five member board who manages the fund. Most importantly with fiduciary funds, assets of the pension fund are not and cannot be used as resources to cover village operations or capital spending. Here's a breakdown of the general fund departments. The four bolded items either have are new or have been modified. So if we look at uh, on the right there, fleet maintenance, we've reorganized this into its own department for better tracking of expense. And buildings and grounds currently reported over several divisions, consolidated this into one department so we can see the cost of each facility um, and wh what it costs to maintain in one spot. And that does not include any personnel cost. Events, the events have consolidated all into one reporting department as well. We've had a, a general fund events 
department, but uh, Vernon Hills Days is now included in there, and there's been some other events that have been reported in operational departments in which we've included, such as National Light Out is now an event. So events, I, I believe we have them all in one spot now. You can see the bottom line for all events. Uh, the general purpose department accounts for several items not already accounted for in another department, beginning with the fiscal 25 budget, cost for liability insurance, and legal services were moved into this department. Fire and police commission and senior citizen committees have historically been reported in their own department. Now the fire and police commission is included under one account in the police department. See page 35 of your draft budget. The senior citizen committee is now accounted for under two accounts senior transportation, and senior programming. And this is in the administration department on the bottom of page 11 in the draft budget. Uh, again, in order to make the prior year comparative data with these changes as consistent as possible, uh, I've organized the prior year data in a consistent manner with the changes outlined. In some cases, there was no practical way to organize the prior year accounts to reflect the new changes. So if you do have questions on any large changes from year to year, uh, we can we can explain those as needed on a case by case case basis. Just to recap, uh, why the changes? Uh, this will help us more accurately reflect reflect the, the true cost and cost centers, reduce the risk of inconsistent accounting, which ultimately re results in more meaningful reporting. Uh, helps us tell a clearer financial story, and lastly, consistent financial reporting uh, now between the budgets and the audits. So here's the funds and departments we're going to cover tonight. We'll start with the general fund. Here's for next next meeting. So <clears throat> projected fiscal year 24 results. I'm going to spend a few minutes covering the highlights and significant changes uh, in 2024. Fiscal 24 amounts are projected year-end amounts using the best information we have now. So these are our best estimates. <clears throat> Looking at the general fund revenues, starting with sales taxes, as I reported to the board in Q2 financial report, also known as the six month review, sales tax revenues have slowed compared to budget and prior year. We are projecting sales tax and home rule sales tax revenue to finish fiscal 24 short of the budget by about $2 million. I also mentioned in hey, the- Hey, Tom. Yes. Tom. Yep. What page are you starting with? 16. 16 of- of the slides, the packet slides. But yeah, can you see the, I don't think you have the slides, Mayor. He may not have it. No. Can you see the- So what page are you, what is this page? What page of the draft budget? Yeah. Page six of the draft budget should have some revenue comparative information. So I'll, I have this page that's on the screen. Uh, he does not. I'm sorry. Mayor, the image on the screen is a summary. So we don't have that. No, Mayor, the, the image that's on the screen is a summary of the information that's in your budget book. Okay, but again, there's no page. It shows me these numbers. Just one page. I can send you the, the, budget, the budget review packet, the presentation packet, if that will help. That's what he yeah, probably would have. My apologies. I'll get page it. page six, sir, should also help as well. That that gives a what page? Page six. Six. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. So I, I can send you those after the presentation, or you want me to send them to you now, Mayor? Yeah, we, yeah, we could yep. pause for a little bit. Maybe you could email them. Yep. I'll, I'll email him right now. A copy of it and let him open it up and then we can pick back up.
The only concern, <clears throat> Mayor, is the file size might be too large to send in. Mayor, we have a, a hard copy on the way to your house. It should be there in a few minutes. Um, if, if you have a specific question, we'd be happy to answer that along the way. Um, otherwise, would you like us to continue or? Yeah, sure. Okay. Yeah, my apologies. The, the file size is too large to email. I, my apologies. Okay. All right, we ready? Okay. All right, so just mentioned, uh, <clears throat> basically projecting the fiscal year to finish with sales tax and, and home rule sales tax under budget by about $2 million. I also mentioned in the Q2 financial report that the sales tax revenue generated in fiscal 23 was at all time record levels. All fiscal 24 sales tax revenues are still pacing higher at higher levels than all of the other years except for fiscal 23. Sales tax revenues are still relatively strong. Uh, moving down the slide to grants, as you can see, fiscal 23 reported a $3.6 million in grant revenue. The village recognized all of the $3.6 million of ARPA funding in this year, and those revenues have not been repeated. Aside from the two sales tax revenues, all other categories are expected to finish the year above budget. We're expecting general fund revenues to finish fiscal 24 about $900,000 less than budget. Moving on to the expense recap for fiscal 24, uh, personnel costs are expected to finish the year under budget by about $600,000. This is largely due to turnover and some full-time positions not being full for the entire year. Also, not, not all part-time hours budgeted were used during the year. Moving down several lines to economic incentives, Sales tax rebates will finish fiscal year 24 under budget by about $500,000. Although sales tax rebates are tied to a few specific companies, these rebates typically follow sales tax revenues overall. As sales tax revenues are down in fiscal 24 compared to the prior year, sales tax rebates can expect to follow suit. Overall, we expect the general fund expenditures to come in under budget by about $1.4 million. A quick question for you, yeah. and, uh, and I was noticing this on a number of pages. Um, is the significant reduction in contractual services a result of doing more stuff in-house or just stuff we don't need anymore, or what? Is there a, like, kind of an overall theme to it or not? The the 198,000 contractual services? Well, yeah, and, and there were a couple of departments I was looking at where there were, you know, big things that have made a couple of changes and I was just, you know, I mean, we can take it as yeah, we go. Yeah, I have an on. answer to that. So for, for this budget, um, budget to project at your end, that's just a result of some of the contracts coming in under budget. What you're talking about for the proposed budget, which, which we're going to speak to, is mainly the, the reallocation of IT expenses. So, so some departments had um, IT expenses reallocated to them that didn't previously have those in them. Okay. And then some of it will just come from the, the changes we've made in the, the whole process, correct? Yes. And ultimately, they're, they're, when I get to the budget comparisons, I can talk to some of the additional contractual services. Okay. Thank you. Hmm. Yep. Okay. This slide shows uh, the same information, but broken down by department. Looking at the transfer recap, uh, transfers from the general fund to the dispatch fund and capital fund will be on target, the $2.15 million for the year as scheduled. This is the time we compare our projected fund balance against the minimum target fund balance established by policy. Current policy dictates no less than 67% of annual operating and debt service expenditures must be covered by the fund balance, pol fund balance of the general fund. Uh, walking you through the projected fiscal year end 2024 uh, fund balance, please focus your attention to the middle column under the heading of projected 24. Starting with the beginning fund balance of 42.9 million, we added revenues of 37.7, less expenditures and transfers out of 32.3 million, resulting in a change in fund balance of $5.4 million, and ending fund balance projected of $48.3 million. 
Now this ending <laughs> fund balance covers the annual operating and debt service expenditures of 30.1 million, 1.6 times or 160%, which far exceeds the minimum target of 67%. Uh, it's just a thought exercise here. Th this fund balance would allow the village to cover 19 months of operating and debt service expenditures without generating any revenue over that time. I'll revis revisit the fund balance uh, later in this presentation. Okay, I'll see you. Yep. Do you have a question, Mayor? Not yet. Okay. Moving on. Looking at fiscal 24 proposed budget. Uh, first, we're going to cover some of the major assumptions. We use 3% COLA increases to non-union employee wages, plus any scheduled wage increase outlined in union contracts. Conservative economic growth assumed, meaning sales tax scheduled in the budget increased less than 1% over the projected fiscal 24 revenue. Hawthorne Mall, American Hotel, and other properties are expected to have significant redevelopment activity. The inherent nature of these large redevelopment projects have <clears throat> provided a challenging environment to project permit and related revenues with high confidence. These types of revenues are volatile. The peaks and valleys of these revenue sources are manageable, however, and staff will continue to report periodic activity to the board, but I felt important to rehash the expectations here during this process. The inflation and the interest rate environment continue to play key roles in the development of the annual budget. Uh, continued talk of recession possibilities and economic uncertainty coupled with the presidential election year may provide for some turbulence in the upcoming budget year. I'll just add one note to, to this slide. This isn't a major assumption that we're using in the budget, but this is an external factor that we are monitoring. Um, you may have heard two weeks ago when Governor Pritzker was giving his state of uh, Illinois budget address, um, one item for consideration is the elimination of the 1% uh, grocery tax. Um, basically, the 1% grocery tax is a tax on groceries at grocery stores, uh, covers things like milk and bread and meats and uh, poultry and things like that. Um, currently for the village of Vernon Hills, our estimate is about 1.7 to $2.1 million. Um, it's very early in the legislative process. There currently isn't a draft bill up for consideration. Um, staff has had the opportunity to speak directly in person with Senator Johnson and Representative Didich on this item to express our concern for this potential loss of revenue. So I just want to make it clear that we did not at this point in time um, amend our proposed budget to include anything with this potential legislation. Um, we are continuing to monitor this, and if we feel that there is a need to adjust course, we will come back to the board accordingly. Um, the one thing we do have in our favor is that our Home Rule Authority does give us the ability to be a little more flexible and adjust some other revenues to help offset some of that potential lost revenue. But again, it's very early in the process. It's something that we're monitoring, but just wanted to make, you clear, make it clear that we did not assume anything with regards to that grocery tax being eliminated with our draft budget. Thank you, Kevin. Okay, jumping into the general fund um, budget, projected budget revenues, or not project, I should say, uh, proposed budget revenues. Uh, sales tax, income tax, and home rule tax continue to make up over 70% of the general fund revenues. Assuming conservative economic growth continuing into the budget year, you can see sales tax revenues, amusement, hotel, motel, food and beverage revenues have been budgeted from flat to slight growth over the prior year, prior year amounts. Construction permit revenues, which are included in the, in the boxed license permits and fees line, are prone to fluctuate, as I mentioned in the prior slide. The larger revenue brought in during fiscal year 22 was related to much of the new redevelopment started at the Hawthorne Mall property. Moving down to investment income, we're going to finish the year north of $2 million in investment income. The fiscal 25 budget amount was 1.25 million, and this assumes interest rates decreasing over the year. If rates stay in place where they are now, we can expect revenue to be comparable to the projected fiscal 24 year end. Overall budgeted general fund revenues are down 1.1 million from the fiscal 24 budgeted revenues and 200,000 below where we anticipate to finish fiscal 24. Moving to the expenditures, um, expenditures, uh, prior year budget versus proposed budget here, personnel up 4.1%, 4 
from the prior year budget, which relates to the cost of living adjustments, scheduled step raises, and increased health insurance costs. Uh, and here's where I can touch a little bit more, uh, Trustee Cook, on the, the contractual services. So as Kevin mentioned, there were movements between departments of allocating IT costs, so that's one piece, but this is all contractual services. So when we look at the proposed 25 budget versus the 24 budget, this shows an 8.1% increase. So some of those, some of those newer items include uh, increased hours for IT network overhaul projects, uh, additional maintenance on ALPR cameras, now, a substantial portion of that new ALPL camera maintenance is covered or will be covered by organized retail grants, retail crime grants. Uh, annual taser maintenance was up, and then also GIS services are increased this year. So that, that accounts for some of those increases in the contractual services. Okay. Did that answer your question? Yeah. Okay. All right, commodities down 19%. As we built out the VRF schedule, several t items that would have been budgeted in operating departments have been moved to the VRF schedule. These items are typically equipment with a cost of $10,000 or more. Equipment replacement contributions are the department contributions that fund the VRF. An additional contribution was added in the proposed budget for $15,000 from the admin department. Building and ground maintenance includes $600,000 of contributions to the capital fund to pay for scheduled major repairs and maintenance to village facilities. This is a concept similar to the VRF and a newly implemented starting in fiscal 25. The events increased $137,000. This is somewhat skewed as the fiscal 24 budget did not include an expense for the carnival as it was netted against a revenue line. So in fiscal 25, we do include those gross, revenue and gross expense, so it's more comparative. Uh, there was an increase in entertainment expense in which we Discuss, recently discussed with the board. Overall, the general fund expenditures included in the fiscal 25 budget have increased 4.2% over the prior year's budget. However, if we, if we do back out these new building and grounds contributions and the new equipment replacement contribution, expenditures are up 2.2% or less than inflation. Increasing operating costs at a rate below inflation is, is definitely an ongoing goal. Looking at the transfers, out of the general fund, the transfers out are up $1.3 million over the prior year budget. Uh, the transfers to the dispatch, golf, and Metra are necessary to keep those funds cash positive through the fiscal 25 budget year. Um, again, you, you'll see 760,000 to the golf, that covers not only 24 capital purchases, but the new putting green and other capital outlay we're planning in fiscal 25. Uh, the transfer to the capital fund is partially fund to partially fund planned capital projects, the remaining funding of these projects comes from the capital funds fund balance. Here's a schedule of our outstanding debt. Uh, each debt issuance's description is noted on the left column. The top half of the schedule lists self-supporting debt or debt that's to be paid by TIF increment revenues. Uh, the bottom half of the debt is being paid from the general fund. The bottom line, we will begin the fiscal 25 year with a debt balance of $24.5 million. We'll pay down $2.9 million in principal and another $770,000 in interest during the year. A little over $500,000 of this debt service will be paid from the general fund. And again, as Kevin mentioned earlier, there's no new bond issuances planned for the upcoming year. So just, just to look at where we project the fund balance to end the budget year, uh, at the end of 4 25 the projected fund balance is $49.6 million, which covers our operating and debt service expenditures by 151%, again, over the target. Are there any questions on the overview of the 25 budget so far? Okay. I have a quick question, Tom, if you guys can hear me. Sure. Go ahead. So you said we're 150 percent, correct? So what, what, what are the, what do our policies state that we should be? The the current policy we have basically just just defines a minimum a minimum balance of 67 percent of those operating and debt service expenses. There's no policy that speaks to uh, a limit. So we're doing very well. Yes, we have a we have a good cash, a strong cash position. 
uh, and we are going to talk about that a little bit later in the presentation. And I have one other question from earlier about the general fund, the tax revenue. You said our tax revenue is down. What industry is, is, is it restaurants? Is it hotel? What, what, what's affecting us? What's affecting the, the decrease in tax revenue this year? Well, I can specifically speak to restaurants and the, and the fact that uh, indicated by our food and beverage tax, which is up, uh, the restaurants are not down. Um, but as far as the other industries, I, I don't have the data at the moment to pinpoint which industries are lagging more than others. Okay, thank you. Okay. Now we're going to move into each department's highlights. Um, and I'm going to turn it over for administration, village board, and events. I'm going to turn it over to Kevin. Okay, we'll begin with our administration budget. Um, I wish I could report we're 28% uh, uh, reduction year to year, but again, this now starts our, our trend of showing the reallocation of some of our IT costs. As Tom mentioned, in our previous budgets, the majority of the IT expenses were allocated into the administration budget. Those have been reallocated to the applicable departments. And so that's what's really driving the reduction in contractual services and commodities. Um, overall, it's a relatively flat budget for administration with personnel up about 2.2%. Some highlights from our, from our past year. Are you familiar with many of these? We introduced our inaugural Military Honors Banner Program. Um, we began the implementation of transferring our paper records to digital records. It's a large undertaking. Liz is here this evening. Liz has been doing that for the last year and has been loving every minute of it. Um, we also created uh, a new Senior Centers Committee, uh, which has been working very well, and uh, Assistant Village Manager Patrillo has been working with the seniors on facilitating that. Um, IT security is an ever, uh, becoming ever more important in our, in our world. Um, staff has taken uh, great lengths this past year to enhance our IT security measures. Um, that includes uh, implementing cert certain security protocols such as uh, multi-factor authentication. We've implemented some staff training uh, where quarterly we have uh, test emails go out to staff to see if they uh, pass the test by not clicking on the certain link, asking them to send money to uh, Mayor Byrne or to myself or whoever. Um, and then we've also uh, finalized a business continuity project, which has created redundancy between the village hall and the police department uh, to protect against any catastrophic event at either of those facilities. And then lastly, as you've seen throughout the year, uh, Director Lyons and his team have been working on updating our financial reporting uh, through our quarterly reporting, our cash and investment reporting and policies, and then also our investment portfolio and policy. Looking forward to 2025, we have a couple of goals highlighted here among others. Um, first, we're going to be hopefully later this year, sometime this summer, implementing a village-wide customer service request platform. Um, you'll see a line item for Munison in the IT software line in the administration budget. That's what that's for. Um, our staff is also working with our website carrier on a free website upgrade and finishing that. Uh, we're hoping to have that launched sometime later this year as well. Um, we have increased the budget for our Vernon Hills Seniors Organization. So current, in our current year budget, um, the programming ex expense comes out to around $700 per month. We've upped that to about $2,500 per month. So uh, great news for the organization and they should hopefully get some good use out of that additional funding. And then lastly, we'll be continuing our digital records processing We'll be looking at some of our village purchasing policies to streamline those processes and procedures, and then continuing our, our investment in IT, uh, in IT management. So overall for administration, we're looking at a proposed budget of $1,897,004. Are there any questions on administration? What, what, what is that up or down as far as percentage? Sure. So overall, Mayor, as a percentage, it's actually down 28%, but again, a lot of that is due to costs that were previously allocated in the administration budget moving to other applicable departments. Oh, okay. Uh, quick okay. overview of the village president and board budget. Um, again, this is relatively flat from year to year. No significant changes in this budget.
does Vernon Hills days come out of the uh, board and president board budget? Uh, no, Mike, it comes out of uh, this budget right here. We've got our events budget. So as, as, as Tom alluded to earlier, we now have a new events department or cost center within our general fund. So we now have all of the village's events uh, categorized in one uh, central area. So what you'll see here is um, a review of all of the events and the costs for the year. Um, the, the major change for this year is in, in the Vernon Hills Days category. Uh, Tom mentioned the two significant changes. One is the um, change to the budgeting of the carnival. We now gross the revenue and expense for the carnival, which is leading to that increase. And then you're all familiar with the increase to the entertainment budget for the upcoming 2024 Vernon Hills Days event. Outside of that, all the other events remain relatively flat uh, for, from year to year. Okay. And then just a quick sneak peek of our events lineup for 2024. We kick off the season with our pageant on June 8th. We have the return of our Arbor Theater Concert Series from uh, June through August. We have the Jim Heyer Veterans Fishing Derby on June 23rd. We have our 4th of July festivities with the morning parade and evening fireworks on July 4th. Vernon Hills Days is scheduled for July 18th through the 21st. And then in August, we have National Night Out on the 6th and Little Bear Rib Fest, uh, date to be determined, for an overall events budget of $433,495. Are there any, any questions on any of those budgets? If not, we will keep it moving and on to uh, Chris for Public Works Fleet and Buildings and Grounds. Thank you. So um, similar to, like Kevin said, our, what we have for the Public Works Fleet and uh, Buildings and Grounds Department is very similar to what you've seen in the past year or last year. Um, relatively flat, uh, small and um, very negligible increase from last year to this year. So some of the changes that you're seeing here have to do with the, the structural uh, changes. So I'll start, um, you can see in the public works, our personnel um, are down and that's almost uh, exactly reflected of what moved into fleet. So our fleet personnel um, have taken, come out of the public works budget and gone into fleet. Um, we're also seeing um, the same thing with commodities being split up between the departments. Uh, the contractual services, which are shown as being up in public works department, um, those are due to uh, the IT services now being, the IT services that public works use now being accounted in public works, as well as the GIS, which used to come from the administration um, and is now budgeted uh, into the, the public works accounts. Um, the, the next one is the, the Buildings and Grounds Department. Uh, again, the, um, the, the projected budget for the Buildings and Grounds is very similar to last year's. These large changes you're seeing are um, due to the contributions to the capital fund um, and the VRF uh, for these, these different buildings. Now I wanted to go over a couple of um, uh, accomplishments of the public works fleet and buildings and grounds um, departments. Uh, so it's, it's one thing to be able to put projects uh, on, a, on a list and a paper, but I'm uh, really proud of our public works staff and engineering department to be able to execute um, a, a large majority of all the capital projects that we had on our, our program this past year. Um, some of the main highlights you can see up here, the Lakeview Parkway construction project, um, the police department booking room renovation, um, as well as the lot four park at, at the Vernon Hills Town Center, uh, as well as completing the pedestrian crossing at the railroad in, in Milwaukee uh, as part of the um, Pulte work with, with the Cuneo development. Uh, we also worked on, on improving some of our, our in-house operations with our public works staff. Um, we made uh, several HVAC repairs at, at the, our, our facilities this year, um, replacing burners in the, in the police department, um, repairing some of the refrigerator, uh, refrigerator units at the um, golf facility, as well as general maintenance that normally we need to subcontract out, but um, our, our staff have been able to take on some of that work uh, with a um, new asphalt hot box that was in the budget last year that was purchased. Uh, we're able to start making um, better asphalt repairs uh, 
and fixing potholes, making patching repairs all year round due to that, that new equipment that helps us um, you know, reclaim hot mix asphalt and, and heat things up so even in the winter months we can make hey, more. Chris? Uh, yes. Chris, it's, it's Pultio, it's money on the railroad crossing improvement. So they have made three out of the four payments. We're, we're going to be sending them the final invoice to date. Um, I believe Pulte has, has uh, reimbursed us around $400,000, and I think they have one more $50,000 invoice to, um, that we have yet to send them. It's on the way. So is that, that covers the whole improvement? That, that will cover 100% of the pedestrian crossings, um, at Milwaukee and and the uh, CN line. Yeah, and it's now negotiated years ago. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Good. <laughs> yes, we were happy that that those those checks came through. Um, yeah. We also have been able to make some uh, field upgrades at the VHAC. Um, you, you can see a picture here of the softball fields. Uh, the dugouts would, would become a, a muddy mess right in, right in the front, and so our staff were able to uh, put a new pad there with some turf to, to keep that um, area uh, better all season long. So we really worked hard to, to start to take on more and more tasks with our, with our staff in-house. Um, we supported sustainability uh, this year. Uh, we had native plant sale. Our staff, through the um, uh, with our Arbor Day celebrations, did some tree plantings with Boy Scouts, as well as our LED retrofit program that we've been uh, using in-house staff to to perform. Um, and finally, we we uh, worked at strengthening a lot of our relationships with with the external partners. Uh, so one of them is Swalco. We've been um, hosting events within conjunction with them throughout the year, like the Shred and Seeds event we had at the Metra, uh, Reuse a Shoe, which is always a, a, a popular event, a big hit. I think the, the most uh, public people I see that come to the Public Works Department are dropping off shoes um, on a daily basis, so it's a, it's a really popular program. Um, I, I, we have been working with our neighboring communities, the Public Works Director I've been working closely with at Libertyville and Mundelein to continue to, to consolidate some of our efforts, combine contracts, uh, our road project next year. Um, we've been working on the engineering design to bid that out uh, together. Uh, we also have coordinated a, a quiet zone recertification uh, with the Vernon Hills quiet zone. This is the east-west line that was, that was never in any issue. Um, we're the lead agency on this one, and I've been working with all the other communities to make sure we've been in good standing uh, with getting our recertification paperwork in. Um, and finally, we, uh, we adopted the new watershed development ordinance, and the village has maintained its community certification with the Stormwater Management Commission. Uh, this was a reapplication year um, so that we are able to perform all of our stormwater reviews and our developments in-house and uh, our, um, the, the developers that come don't have to submit to the SMC, which really streamlines our, our development process. As far as our department goals, um, number one is, is maintaining village infrastructure. You know, that's the, the nuts and bolts of what, what we do in the public works department. Um, and there's a, there's a couple focuses, uh, you know, our, our uh, capital improvement program, um, we're, we're really going to work on continuing to execute those projects we put on there, as well as some of the longer term uh, planning efforts, uh, everything from what was approved tonight in, in reviewing the police campus, um, some of our other uh, planning studies that we have in the capital program that I went over in, in January. Um, as well as some of the new, there, there's some new equipment that we'll touch on uh, later today in the VERF that are going to help us um, continue to, to maintain the, the village and the, the highest standard. Uh, we're looking at getting a new piece of equipment for the VHAC um, to be able to better maintain our, our fields out there. Um, it's a multi-purpose unit to, to keep the, be able to groom the baseball fields as well as uh, level them and, and reduce some of our contractual services that right now we have to outsource. Um, we're also going to be uh, upfitting our um, public works uh, facility, our, our fleet bay, with a new heavy equipment lift. Right now we can't um, lift up our large salt trucks, so if there's anything that, uh, any repairs that need to be done that um, 
involve lifting the, the truck off the ground, we have to send them out to be repaired since we don't have the, the lift to, to adequately pick those up and that's gonna be included in, um, in the budget this year as well. Uh, the next item is maintaining green spaces and, and promoting uh, sustainability. Uh, you know, we, we're just going to continue to work with our, all of our properties, our open space properties like Harvey Lake and the Arbor Theater and the CV Ditch as well as the BHAC to make sure that, um, you know, we keep this town beautiful um, as well as encouraging uh, sustainability throughout the village. Uh, we want to provide high quality training opportunities and resources. Um, we're, we're looking at expanding um, what are the, the training classes for our staff, uh, updating our um, CDL licenses to, to try and expand the, um, the different class of licenses that we have within Public Works, uh, as well as maintaining um, safety as one of the highest priorities within our department. Um, also looking forward to providing uh, management leadership and succession planning. You know, I, I, as we saw earlier today, um, to start this, this meeting, our public works staff has uh, extensive experience, um, 45 years with, with Pete, and I really want to work to pass a lot of that knowledge down to our, our newer staff to ma make sure we're maintaining a, a high level of excellence in our department. And finally, I um, want to make sure we're preserving high quality development standards. Um, we really want to make sure that the, the developments that come to town, uh, come to the village, are, are meeting our high expectations from an um, engineering standpoint, from a quality standpoint, and, and we're getting um, the developments that Vernon Hills expects. So uh, I have a summary here of the three different departments, and I'd be happy to answer any questions um, that the board has. Are, are we through planting and replacing the ash trees in town? Uh, yeah, at this point, there's there are no um, identified uh, ash trees that need to be removed. Uh, there are a few that we'll find in uh, in the village uh, that are in good health sporadically. You'll you'll see. We don't actively remove them if they're not a hazard. Uh, we, but we our our public work staff are forestry department monitors um, all of our parkway trees and, and our canopy to make sure they're in good health. So is there any new disease out there? You know, there, there's not one thing in particular. Uh, we are seeing a lot of uh, issues with our pine trees in the village. Um, there's some funguses that, that have been going after them. Um, they, I feel like they always stand out because all year long when a pine tree has a health issue, it turns brown and stands out like a sore thumb. Well, you may not see that with some of the other trees. Um, we're monitoring that and being cognizant of, of when we do replacements, um, finding the appropriate trees. But there, there's no um, major issue on the horizon that we're expecting to um, significantly alter the um, uh, the tree species uh, within the village. Okay, and what, what this is, I don't know if this is yours or not, with Commonwealth Edison, are they planning on doing any more of those, I guess, uh, state-of-the-art switches to be done up and down Route 45, for example? I mean, is there any major improvements to the original section of town because they still get a lot of power outages at this point i don't have any knowledge of upcoming um comed upgrades I, I don't know if that's anyone else but no mayor we we have an annual meeting with comed they review um the the annual report for the village and there are currently no plans to do any type of those uh, improvements. The, the major improvement that they did make was on Route 60. Um, I forget the technical term for it, but on the, on the power lines coming into town, uh, they placed uh, additional cables on the top of those lines to prevent from uh, tree branches falling and taking out uh, the power lines. I know that was a big project that they completed recently, uh, but no, no utility burial projects that we've been made aware of. Okay. Okay.
Okay. Uh, I guess it's over to the police department then. And I um, uh, just want to introduce, um, I'm, I'm here with uh, the rest of the leadership team, uh, both uh, Deputy Chief Jeff Selak and uh, Shannon Hollybitz have, uh, have been uh, uh, instrumental in this planning. Who's not here is Andy Hoppy, who you've heard, and uh, Laura Erickson. Uh, Andy's really the workhorse. Um, I think uh, Director uh, Lyons uh, um, really tested her steel uh, this year with the amount of changes that went in. But, uh, you know, Andy kept uh, good cheer through the whole thing. And I think we, we have a process that going forward will make uh, a lot more sense. But uh, next slide, you'll see uh, some of the changes um, in the overall. Uh, can I have the. Uh, thanks. There you go. Um, uh, in the overall budget, I'll, I'll just point out that 5% uh, increase in personnel costs. That includes the um, uh, previously stated uh, cost of uh, living increase, step increases that apply throughout the uh, department for those personnel that are moving through, um, through their step uh, increases, mm -hmm. um, as well as the increase, the, uh, uh, the allocation to the uh, police pension fund. Uh, so that makes up that five, uh, just over 5%. Uh, the big jump you see in contractual services is, again, um, really an accounting uh, feature of moving IT cost from centralized in one budget to the different departments. Um, and then you'll see everything else is relatively flat dollar-wise. A uh, couple uh, high-level um, accomplishments. Uh, we've maintained a, a good, stable uh, workforce this year. There was only one promotion, unlike many previous years, so we're pretty stable in the leadership team. Uh, brought on four uh, new officers uh, due to retirements and resignations. Um, Chris already mentioned the uh, booking facility that just wrapped up, I think, yesterday, technically, um, but a really good project that uh, uh, Deputy Chief uh, Hollybets and and Commander Foy really took the lead um, and then uh, relied on our partners at Public Works and Engineering um, to make some real functional improvements to the, uh, uh, to the booking facility. Uh, you've all met uh, Billy. She was here tonight. She's been a big hit. We're coming on to um, not quite a year with uh, Billy on the team, but uh, uh, and then we've talked previously about some of the equipment um, upgrades we made this year. Um, the body cameras were done several months ago, and in fact, last week we just finished the um, issue of the new pistols, and in particularly what, uh, what this brings is uh, a new type of sighting technology, and in my experience of over 30 years of doing this, this is one of those, um, one, one of those uh, leaps in technology that really help, um, and the officers have all just... Uh, uh, really welcomed uh, the new technology that we have on our pistols now to make it uh, um, to, to make uh, them more confident in their ability should they ever have to use um, uh, a, a, a pistol. Um, we also uh, both deputy chiefs worked uh, for well over a year in researching and um, uh, putting together an IGA with five different jurisdictions. Uh, that we share a state-of-the-art training simulator. You know that the um, Safety Act, uh, which was passed back in 2021, one of the features of that was really requiring more scenario-based training, more scenario training, and, and that simulator is a big part of that. So um, uh, next on to some uh, goals here. Uh, I am recommending that uh, we maintain current... Um, next slide, please. We maintain current uh, sworn staffing. Uh, no changes are being recommended at this time uh, for our sworn personnel. We are, however, uh, re uh, requesting Village Board approve um, an additional part-time investigative support specialist um, to the budget, and we could, we could highlight and talk more about that if you'd like. Um, it, it, Chris already mentioned, um, and tonight you passed a... Uh, uh, proposal to bring in a architectural firm to, to help the police department really um, do a comprehensive uh, space needs and building assessment of the police campus and look forward to reporting to the village board later this year um, about what that yields. 
Uh, and then I'm happy to say last year we purchased our first hybrid police fleet vehicle and uh, we have received just universally positive um, results. Uh, it took a few years for some of those kinks to get worked out. We watched some other departments go through that and it seems like they're done and, and our interaction with the fleet uh, manager, uh, as well as our officers report is that it's a big hit. So I think we'll continue to do that where, um, where they're available. We'll continue to do that. And there might be some other opportunities on alternative fuel vehicles, uh, but more work to be done. Um, we've talked a lot about the 911 um, dispatch uh, consolidation. I think in the next couple months, you're going to uh, be um, presented with several IGAs to consider and more reports, more of the details uh, of that. Um, a, a step on the path to that, though, is the technology consolidation. And we're about six weeks out of actually going live with the new CAD, which stands for Computer Aided Dispatch and Records Management System, uh, which will bring all of our partners onto one uh, data set and on one shared platform. Uh, so we're not having to support our own uh, CAD and RMS system, but rather uh, throughout the county, any uh, police and fire jurisdiction be able to join that. And I think we're starting with over 30 jurisdictions uh, in that. But it's a, it's a tremendous amount of work uh, to do, and that's, that's uh, undergoing now. Um, and uh, we... we we uh, really highlight uh, continuing to stabilize um, our telecommunicators and look forward to a smooth transition to LACOM probably uh, in the short end of the next budget year. This budget year is pretty stable, and the, uh, the bottom line for uh, dispatch operations is uh, uh, presented to you there. Uh, the last comments I'll have is about the special funds that Tom highlighted. Uh, these have restrictions on them, uh, different sets of rules on how these are utilized. Uh, we are recommending that we make a transfer from the DUI fund balance. There's, there's no real reason to leave those funds in that amount, and we're able to uh, use a portion of those funds to, uh, toward the purchase of a patrol vehicle, which is then used to go out there and enforce uh, DUI laws. So, um, we are recommending that uh, transfer, and then uh, the rest of the funds, if we have a need for spending in that, we come back to the village board each and every time a penny is going to be spent out of the, one of those funds and ask for an ordinance uh, to make sure we're fully transparent about those, uh, those funds. So with that, I'll take any questions that uh, the mayor or the board might have. Uh no. Okay. So, but our budget for it's two point four million for what did I just it's say? Dispatch, sir. That's our dispatch fund. Yeah. Two, two four. Uh, yeah, two million four hundred fifty-seven. Two million four hundred fifty-seven thousand two hundred thirty dollars. Right. And, and how much it is for personnel? Well, I would um, I would highlight that this um, this is our expense side. We also receive revenues that offset this. I believe the rough number for our personnel uh, one point eight million, Chief Mayor. That's located on page one hundred and fifteen of your budget book. The the total personnel line for. Dispatch center is $1.8 million. Okay. Okay. Thank you. So on to community development. <clears throat> We have um, a, uh, at the high level, uh, an overall increase in 4% um, for our uh, expenses for this, for this fiscal year. Um, it's primarily due to uh, our step increases for the employees who are still eligible for them, 
uh, cost of living adjustments. Um, the reduction in contractual services is due to our, um, we had a, a portion of our budget uh, allocated to uh, GIS services, uh, which would now be consolidated into the single line, which would be in public works. Um, we do have a, uh, a one-time increases in commodities related to the purchase of a large format scanner um, and code books. We're doing, we're beginning the preparation for a uh, periodic code update. We do um, updates uh, every six years or so. So uh, we are starting that work. It'll probably spill over from this fiscal year into the next, but uh, the expense of uh, purchasing those code books uh, is in this, uh, this year's budget. So we have a, a total uh, a, a fiscal 24 uh, projection of uh, permanent revenue of $1.77 million. Um, that includes the anticipated permit fees from several projects that have zoning entitlement, uh, but they haven't uh, actually had their permits issued just yet. Um, we do anticipate that those projects listed here, so Yard House, uh, the Numero uh, build out on Darling, uh, the mall drive realignment, um, which is associated with the, uh, it was part of the phase two project, now is related to the, uh, the DOMS concept uh, that you've seen. Um, and then the interior build out of the Hawthorne Row retail unit. So those, those items, we, have a, we believe there's a high likelihood they're going to be permitted before May. Um, uh, past May, though, you see the, the projected uh, fiscal 25 uh, revenue, which we, the total for that is uh, 1.72 million. And out of that, 1.72 is uh, 875,000 from uh, the, the projects uh, that include the second mixed-use building at the mall and uh, additional outlaw construction. Uh, we believe two outlaw buildings would be uh, built in fiscal 25. So we we have. We make uh, incremental improvements um, in our permit management. Um, such as uh, we have, we have a, a goal of internal turnaround times, things that the public doesn't necessarily know about, but we, uh, along the line, the uh, policy of trying to do uh, more uh, with what we have, uh, we, we strive for efficiency. So um, we have turnaround times for how long a permit can sit in each spot in the office. Uh, so we, we've been working toward making uh, uh, incremental improvements in that. You can see uh, from this slide, we do have um, year over year, our, per our total permit volume is fairly consistent. We're, uh, you know, 1,400 permits more or less the last three years. Um, so uh, the reason I put this on the uh, accomplishment slide is just doing what we do slightly better, I consider to be our, our primary accomplishment. There's a very high volume of permit activity here for the number of people that we have doing it. Uh, and we understand that this is a, uh, of course, a, a, a extreme importance to the village, having commercial permits, residential permits uh, uh, processed in a timely manner uh, with high quality customer service uh, is, is one of our uh, biggest accomplishments. Um, project related accomplishments here, we have the Hawthorne Row uh, retail shell. Uh, so this is the retail units below the domain. Uh, are complete. The domain is now more than 50% occupied. Uh, the, we consider the steakhouse building now to be complete for all intents and purposes. Um, we're projecting a opening um, in about a month at this point. So uh, another accomplishment for us is managing the build out of the interior space of the South Lake Industrial Center. It was built as a spec project and is now 75% occupied. Uh, continuing our theme of, of trying to do uh, more with what we have, uh, we're trying to get away from, uh, we have a large number of uh, uh, processes that we manage um, semi-manually. Uh, there's a lot of paper involved. We're trying to reduce that. We, we are trying to make things uh, just move more smoothly. Uh, so to that end, we're trying to use the tools that we have uh, more frequently moving uh, items uh, like business licensing, which is very paper intensive, over into a more software-based system. Um, we are working on uh, the beginning stages of updating the building code, uh, making improvements to business licensing, and again, uh, working with Director Lyon. This is we started last year, 
just trying to create a more predictable um, uh, uh, way to, to demonstrate our revenue or to project our revenue, uh, separating out what we consider to be regular routine permit revenue, uh, your decks, uh, uh, patio projects, uh, minor renovations to commercial and residential space, separating that relatively stable revenue you can see here in orange uh, from the blue revenue, which is the new construction, uh, which tends to fluctuate when you have uh, very large projects. Um, uh, we try to budget uh, accurately, uh, more accurately uh, year over year. Uh, our total budget uh, for this year is just over a million dollars. I think it's the first time we've probably cracked a million dollars. Um, and happy to answer any questions that you might have. Yeah, uh, Andrew, uh, are we cross training or giving any additional training to our inspectors to look for, you know, uh, health code violations in the food facilities? We don't have anything. We don't have anything specific for health code uh, necessarily with our inspectors. Uh, they are, uh, we do work with uh, the county, um, so we would refer most health code related issues to, to the county. So well, what kind of training do our guys have? Our, our they walk into a facility our, our they can recognize something. So uh, our inspectors, uh, the training that they've been doing recently, uh, one of our inspectors uh, did a, uh, a, a, a seminar on the plumbing code. Uh, we had another uh, do a, a accessibility requirements. Um, so we do encourage them to, uh, to uh, I, we get lists of classes every month and uh, certainly encourage them to keep up, uh, up to date on things. Um, our uh, electrical inspector, Picked up probably three different certifications in this last year, so um, try to keep. Andrew, the reason I asked that question is because we had that uh, real problem with chilies. You know, just 15 years ago, where 165 people got sicker than heck with E. coli or salmonella. And uh, so, how confident are we in the county, you know, being able to handle all the different, you know, food selling establishments in town? How often do they come around? It's a good question. Um, I, can, I can check in with the health department. We've dealt mostly with the public works department of the county. Um, we do deal with the health department um, Working on a, on a unit by unit basis occasionally, but I, that's a good question. I'd be uh, happy to check in with them and just um, get a little bit more information yeah. about their inspection program. Yeah. Lake County Food Establishments. Lake County Food Establishments is, is about every six months. Um, if they're a high risk, I believe it's like every three months. Yeah. Well, you know, Mike, along those lines, you know, we did have you know, a serious, you know, issue in town, like I said. Yeah. No, I remember. And I think it's tough yeah. because the, if they're not, if they're coming in to look at, say, accessibility or, or, or building, and they, and they recognize something, I think the best move would then to be to contact Lake County Health and get them in there because they're, it, it, yeah, it's, of course. It's, it's a full-time job as a health inspector. And, you know, right. so to recognize, you know, because there are times, yeah. I can tell you this, there are times when the health inspector can show up out of schedule, you know, like, because maybe somebody thought they saw something or maybe they, maybe there was um, someone called in a violation and they'll come in and do a full routine inspection. So I know Lake County has no problem with that. Yeah, okay. All From right, well, experience. uh, so, well, Kurt, Andrew, whatever you could find would be helpful. Okay? Sure. Okay. 
All right, getting to the home stretch here. I got a few slides to cover on the capital fund high level as well as the VRF. So looking at the uh, slide here, the capital fund summary overview. This includes all the revenues, expenditures, transfers in, as well as fund balance information for the fund. If you focus your attention along the far right column, the draft budget, I'll walk you down there. <clears throat> if you move down to expenditures under capital outlay, we've broken out four different categories. Beginning this year, streets and roads, village facilities, open spaces, stormwater, and other one-time type projects. This is how we've classified all of our projects into these categories. So you get the high level here. Um, the whole streets and road program is accounted for here beginning in 25. So that's why you see a big jump in the streets and roads up to 2.5, 2.6 million dollars. Uh, in the past, the motor fuel uh, tax fund would house these expenses and report these expenses. Now, the motor fuel tax fund is still funding the road program and it's coming in through the transfers. If you move down towards the bottom of the uh, page here, you'll see two transfer lines for coming in from the general fund as well as two transfer lines coming in from the motor fuel tax fund. Uh, that's the main source of funding these capital projects. Again, budget includes plans to spend down about $1 million of fund balance and finish the year with $1.5 million in fund balance. So the, the layout of the capital fund accounts has been updated from the prior year. Uh, I'm just gonna run through a snapshot here you see of the streets and roads related projects. This whole section includes three subcategories and the total expenditure for each section is reported on the financial summary I just covered on the last slide. Uh, the detail of this fund now reports expenditures at the project level as each line now represents a project. Uh, this will allow us to account and report uh, progress at the project level more easily. Uh, Chris did cover the capital improvement program in greater detail with the board in January, so I'm not gonna go line by line here. Uh, except there are a couple line, line items I want to point out that were not included in that presentation. So th the other one-time projects include items that were not originally presented in the capital improvement program. Two of the uh, items boxed in red are projects related to the park district. First, we have included the proposed budget for a 50% share of renovations to be completed at Century Park Plaza. These costs will be shared with the park district as well as uh, proposed $400,000 that the board did approve in 2023. This was for the contribution to the park district to help fund the Turtle Creek Splash Park construction. As construction for this project will begin after May 1, this contribution was not made in fiscal 24 and has been moved to the 25 budget. And I know, yeah, yes. Yep. I, I can speak to that. Um, this is actually a very recent, this was about a week and a half ago. Uh, the park district is looking to perform some work prior to the summer season. This is the plaza area in Century Park, kind of near the entrance to Vernon Hills days. Um, that plaza is re in real disrepair. There's a lot of bricks that are loose and, and crumbling. So they're, they're going through a project of uh, basically resurfacing that whole area uh, with new decorative concrete. Um, considering that we use the park a good majority of the summer with them for 4th of July and in Vernon Hills days, they asked if we'd be willing to share in the cost. So we're presenting this this evening for consideration by the board. Again, this is a really recent uh, recent proposal. This was since our last board meeting. Is, uh, do they agree to the tree? Of the Christmas tree? Uh, we they did. I can have uh, Director Venata speak to that. Uh, yeah, so, so Public Works uh, met with uh, members of the Park District out at Century Park. We looked at um, an area that made sense both from the events that are hosted out there. There's also some geographical uh, restrictions, some low areas, swampy areas. We want to get an area that has um, really good uh, health, um, but it's, it's uh, close to the, the location that this, this, this project he's referring to, a little on the northern side of that. Um, parcel where the where the bathrooms are and, and just south of this plaza. A picture would it would help more. <laughs> so it's, uh, it's not it's not far from where we showed during the presentation okay. with the board uh, a few weeks ago. It, it's in that general vicinity. In that general vicinity. Okay. So uh, if you're if you're at Vernon Hills Days, it would be located behind the stage yeah. in that grassy area. Great. 
So one item I wanted to touch on um, as part of my presentation in January on the Capital Improvement Program, uh, we had several questions about our streetlight LED replacement. Um, the question from the board was whether or not we could uh, speed up that process. Uh, if you remember right now, we do all the work in-house. Um, we're basically, what we're putting in the budget, uh, proposing in the budget for next year, which is $200,000 worth of lights. There's, there's different styles and types of lights, but we could say they average out around $1,000 um, a fixture. Uh, so it's 200,000 is around 200 lights. That's really the max capacity that we can do uh, with in-house staff. Um, maybe over as, as we work through this program and we get uh, more efficient at it, there is an opportunity that could potentially increase. But at this, at this point in time, that's really where we max out. So I put together a, um, a replacement schedule. So you can see the, the top line of this chart here. Um, if we, uh, the, the total material costs for um, the replacing all the fixtures in the village is $1.8 million. Uh, if we replace them over nine years, um, that's, that's the $200,000 a year, the total cost will be $1.8 million. Um, if we were to contract it out and let's say put in our capital program, um, I just did the most extreme case of next year, the entire replacement. Um, we obviously can't do that in-house, so we would have to hire a contractor, which we estimate would be about 45% of the material costs in, in labor, equipment, uh, markup. So we would um, project the, the total cost of that project to be around $2.6 million. Um, the, the energy savings, so right now we spend around $75,000 per year on electricity. Uh, the LEDs, we should see around a 45% reduction um, in our usage, um, and as well as some maintenance savings. The, the LEDs uh, don't have as many parts, they don't have ballasts in them, uh, they don't go out as frequently, they have a longer lifespan. Um, <clears throat> when we get storms, uh, temperature fluctuations, they're much more resistant to that, so our, our current LEDs require a lot more maintenance each year. We're replacing around 150 bulbs um, each year that just go out on our, our current high pressure sodium. Um, and so we projected around a $20,000 per year savings once we're um, fully LED. So what I took is that um, the electrical savings and the maintenance savings and said if, if we replace everything next year, over those next eight years, we would save around $430,000. So you can see the total on the right-hand right column. Over the nine years that we're proposing the program, it would cost if we do it in-house, 1.8 million. Um, even with those electricity and maintenance savings, we would still project um, it would only come out to a balance of two point, it would, it would come out to a balance of $2.18 million, um, which would ultimately be more expensive. Uh, so what we are recommending is to continue to do this work in-house, uh, funded at the $200,000 per year level, uh, because we're not seeing Obviously, there's other elements to replacing LEDs. There's a sustainability standpoint. Um, but from a, a financial standpoint, uh, we don't see an advantage in, in um, speeding up the program at this time. Okay. I think other than that, the, the, this comment and, and what Tom highlighted, uh, all of the... the um, capital program is similar to what we presented in January, but we'd, I would be happy to answer any questions you have on that program at, at this time. Okay. Uh, hearing none, I'm going to move us on to look at a high level on the VERF fund. Uh, and we're a few slides left. <coughs> So summary of the curve, similar to the capital the fund. Always. So similar. Oops. Michael. Trustee Sank, do you have a question? Okay. Oh, no, sorry. I left my light on and the road is closed in front of me. No worries. Sorry. I left his light on. All right. Okay, carrying on. Uh, the VERF fund financial overview. Similar to the capital fund, uh, the transfers in are the main funding source here, as we had touched on the, the VERF concept a lot throughout the presentation. Um, the plan in the budget includes spending down $670,000 of fund balance during the year. 
uh, and and there is a little adjustment on the bottom here that you don't don't typically see because this this uh, six hundred eighty thousand dollars adjustment to the beginning fund balance this is relates to converting the fund from a business type fund to a capital governmental type fund so it just addresses moving out what has been counted for uh, for the capital assets to date uh, but What's left over at the end, uh, $1.4 million, is now going to reflect more close to the cash balance. So similar, again, similar to the capital fund, the VERF layout has been updated from the replacement fund layout of the prior year. The VERF includes two main replacement categories, fleet replacement, which typically includes drivable vehicles, and the equipment replacement, which typically includes the equipment used in operations with a cost greater than $10,000. Uh, this slide includes fleet replacement and shows each vehicle scheduled to be purchased by description under the department heading. Uh, and then this slide shows the next, uh, shows, shows each piece of the equipment that is scheduled to be purchased under the respective department. Here we have a few items from administration and public works and, oops, sorry from Administration and Public Works. And then this slide shows the uh, equipment for the police, community development, and IT infrastructure. Now the IT infrastructure is funded by contributions from all departments, uh, while each department makes contributions to the VERF to fund its own equipment. Now there are no prior year amounts reported here as these items would have been included in the equipment and supplies items of each department's operating budget in the past. Are there any, any questions on the VERF? No. Okay. Well, as, as Trustee Shank alluded to earlier, um, the village is overall in very healthy financial condition at the moment. Um, as you can see, we're projecting to end the year at just shy of $50 million in general fund balance. That puts us at 151% uh, of, uh, target balance, um, above our target of 67%. And we have AAA bond rating, no new debt being issued, and of course, delivering village service without levying a municipal property tax. And, and as you also know, uh, the village, while we're presenting a, a fiscal year budget, we don't exist just within a fiscal year. We're, we're here beyond multiple fiscal years. And so we wanted to um, uh, talk through a scenario with the board about taking advantage of our cur current financial position and possibly thinking towards the future and funding some of our future obligations in our capital fund and in the VERF. And so Director Lyons has put together um, a walkthrough of a scenario that we wanted to propose uh, to help make sure that we have appropriate reserves on hand in the future as we know we have future needs coming up for those two programs. So Tom, if you could walk through those. Yep, thank you. Um, so at the top of this slide, I've kind of uh, have a few key points I wanted to hit on. So ultimately at the top is the, the recommendation for consideration, and that is to commit a portion of the general fund balance to fund three years worth of VERF and capital project uh, expenditures. Now, how do we come to the amount here? If we, if we move down to the three years of funding cost section there, if we look at the VERF and we look at our scheduled um, purchases over the next three years, and we back out the fund balance that is already in the VERF, uh, we come to just over $2.1 million needed in the VERF to fund a three-year target of projects. Now, same if we look at the capital project fund, um, three years worth of capital projects scheduled out is about $10.8 million. The less the fund balance projected at the end of fiscal 25 would be 1.6. So again, funding needed to hit that three-year mark would be 9.2. So if we take the 2.1 from the VERF and the 9.2 from the capital funding need, and we would uh, basically be committing $11.3 million of general fund balance into the VERF and the capital. So that way we have uh, available a three-year window of projects to, spend, uh, to cover expenses. Now, if we have economic downturns and, so, and whatnot, and we are in a given year where we are unable to make the contributions to the fund capital and VERF uh, contributions, <coughs> we're able to still make these purchases, continue the services uh, as, <coughs> as everyone's used to. Um, so what's the fund balance impact on this? 
So as we mentioned already, the fund balance before this transfer would be $49.6 million or 151% of operating and debt service costs. After this transfer, the fund balance would be reduced down to $38.3 million, uh, still 116% of the operating and debt service expenses. Just for perspective here for the board, if we look at the last two years worth of general fund increases in fund balance, we're uh, just over $14.6 million just in the last two years. So this, this contribution, this move of funds would take advantage of the most recent uh, financial success and help us uh, maintain financial st 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 stability going forward, excuse me. Um, and so why do we come to a three-year target? So I put this slide together here uh, which shows our revenue growth history over the last, since 2000, so about 24 years. So from the bottom, uh, 2000 up to the top, 2023. The second column over includes the sales tax revenue, so our largest revenue in the village. Uh, and then the next column to the right is year-over-year -year growth. So this is the percentage of increase or decrease each year. So I've highlighted in yellow the years in which revenues dropped. And I'm going to focus on the three... Uh, clusters of yellow that basically dropped two years in a row. And if we look at each recovery period indicated by the right, far right columns, uh, how many years did it take to get back to that benchmark or watermark uh, when the revenues started to drop? And you can see four years, five years, three years. Um, so this, when we look at this in a, in a, um, at a high level, a three year target is affordable and it gives us time with the board to make decisions on uh, any um, funding needs, future funding needs, rather than making the decision in one calendar year. We have time now to stop contributions to those capital and birth funds uh, if we need to in any given year to reassess uh, our bottom line. So, so, so yeah. in other words, if we, <clears throat> were to have our normal growth over the next couple, three years, these funds would all basically be replaced because this is stuff that we would have taken out of future revenue, correct? Yeah, so year to year we assess and see how much each fund, the VERF and capital, will need in a given year, and then we will fund that, make sure between contributions from the general fund and what's remaining in the fund balance of the VERF and capital funds, and we make sure those contributions are there. All this is doing is starting us off with a three-year landing pad, and then each year we'll still assess and add that last year on to keep at that three-year uh, funded target. Okay. So another way to look at it is lessening the dependence on that year's revenues to pay for these replacements. So we've already identified that the reason we have these in our schedule is because these are really operating items. You know, the, the police department can't provide police protection without squad cars. We can't provide uh, service at our front counter without updated computers. And so knowing that these equipment and vehicles are essential to our operations, by having the money set aside, and if we do experience one of those downturns, we know that if we can't make a contribution that year, we can still keep our operating budget funded and, and continuing and still make those necessary replacements to keep our services going without interruption. Um, it, it, looking backwards, what, what the numbers also don't show is that the past practice has been if there is a downturn, we defer things. So we, we drive a car longer, we use an outdated computer, it gets the job, it, it solves the financial element, but it doesn't really help us in the long run because then we're buying more vehicles at, at a higher rate to make up for the vehicles that we didn't replace, or we're now using out-of-date technology, which is slowing down service. And so our goal is to weather all of those financial storms without having any disruption to the village service, which means keeping the operating budget, the general fund continuing, and keeping our equipment replacements and capital program operating without disruption. That, that's really another way to, to look at it. So it's kind of like a rainy day account. It's a larger rainy day account, mm, correct. Yeah. So right now, under our current funding, I, th I think 1.4 million for the balance for the VERF, that might get us maybe a year and a half worth of purchases. So it's, it's a very small purchasing power. We would still need to depend on that, a portion of that year's revenues to make the full uh, expenditure. 
and I, I just want to add, I forgot to mention earlier, uh, this commitment by the board to do this transfer, if, if that was uh, the choice made, uh, it's not restricting. So the board may undo this, and we may bring funds back into the general fund uh, any time that we need to do that. Yeah. So it's just sort of an accounting trick to help you plan better and make sure that um, the funds are yeah. there Trick. I, I mean, it helps us earmark. <laughs> it helps us. You don't like the word trick. Well, Sorry. It, it, if we if we schedule out expenses that we know we have obligations to meet, yeah. uh, all we're doing now is really just kind of earmarking a funding source for those. Right. Yeah. But, but we've got a big pot of money funding source right now. So right. The, it's it's the, the jar in the cabinet that nobody knows about. You know, kind of annoying. Yeah. <laughs> I digress. <laughs> <laughs> and, and also to reiterate. We go through this exercise every year. So mm -hmm. even though we're, we're presenting three years of funding, the board on an annual basis is still approving the vehicle purchases, the equipment replacements, the capital improvement program for that year. So there, there's plenty of opportunities to, to amend the plan, to change, like, like Tom said, uncommit the funding back to the general fund if that's the desire of the board. Yeah. But I think by putting this money into those funds, we're, we're starting to now even out the, the piles a little bit better. We know that we have a five-year capital improvement plan. We know that we have a 30-year VRF. And so if we can start pre-funding some of those, it, it helps to maybe paint a, a better picture of our true obligations of the village. And having a higher fund uh, in the general fund, it may, it may send the wrong message to a reader to say, oh, they, they just have funds here that there's no They're expenses. But we in. do have yeah. obligations and, and future expenses to fund. So it helps us kind of show that. And then the last slide here just shows how we could present that in the budget. So rather than just hide a bit large transfer in a transfer line, we could, uh, from the top there, calculate the net change in fund balance before the one-time capital funding transfer so that we know we were planning a, a balanced budget. And then we have a one-time transfer shown on its own line so it's clear to the reader. Uh, and then ultimately, the, the the final net change in ba fund balance, so it's it's not hidden anywhere. We That's one way we could do. We that. appreciate the fact that we're dropping a 11.3 million dollar transfer on you uh, without notice. So we're not looking for a final decision this evening. We wanted to float this concept to you for your consideration. This is certainly something we can revisit again in two weeks and possibly again uh, at our April discussion. But this this is what it would look like in our budget uh, for your review. Is there any downside of doing this? Uh, I would say no. Again, the fact that it's not restricted, they're just committed. It can be pulled back at any time. We're not spending $11.3 million. Right. We're just sending it into a different fund. So there, in the short term, there really is no, no downside to doing this. And I think it's going to give the board and management more tools to, uh, you know, if when we do hit a down cycle um, to deal with, funding options. So we don't have to make large transfers from the general fund. It's already there funded. Um, lays out the financial sustainability uh, piece a little bit longer. So. Okay. And then the lucky slide. Everybody's favorite. Like that one. That's all I have for tonight. That's, that's all we have for this evening. If there's any other questions on tonight's presentation, we'd be happy to answer them. Uh, again, you have your, your budget books with, with uh, further refined details by account. Um, so by all means, between now and, and next meeting, if you have any questions, please let me or any of the staff members know. We'd be happy to sit down with you and go over that. At our next meeting on the 19th, we plan to finish the remainder of the budget, which are TIF funds, uh, the Golf Fund, and Metro Fund, and MFT. Okay. Is there a, a closed session that I know? Uh, no closed session. Okay. All right. <clears throat> any other comments from any board members on the budget stuff so far? I do find it easier to read, as, as we've talked before. It's, it's, it's easier to follow you don't miss in this charts. new format. What's that? I, you don't miss the charts? <laughs> I, I do miss some of the charts, though. <laughs> Seems like we have more charts to look at for a comparison. I appreciate that feedback. That means a lot. And, and if there is something that you want to see differently, please, yeah. please let me know. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So Thanks, Tom. Does that mean we should? I move to adjourn. I'll second that.
Motion is second to adjourn. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, we are adjourned. Yeah, that's not bad at all. Kevin, if you heard.